live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Barcelona, Spain for Cisco Live Europe 2019. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante is out there as well co-hosting this week. Our next guest is John Apostolopoulos, who's the VP and CTO of the Enterprise Networking Business Unit, Lab Director for the Innovation Labs. Here to talk with us about AI and some of the great innovations. John, thanks for coming on theCUBE, great to see you. Thank you for inviting me, pleasure so, to be here. Cisco, obviously, big, big announcements, the messaging's coming together, certainly the bridge for the future, bridge for tomorrow, whatever the phrase is. You know, kind of looking at that new world, connecting on-premise, cloud, ACI anywhere, Hyperflex anywhere, a lot of complexity being abstracted away with software, separate from the, decoupled from the hardware, a lot of scale in the cloud, and IoT and all around the edge. So software is a big part of this. Oh yeah. So you can't help but think, okay, complexity, scale, you see Facebook using machine learning. Machine learning and AI operations now, a real conversation for Cisco. Yeah. Talk about what that is. How are you guys looking at AI and machine learning in particular? It's been around for a while. What's your thoughts on Cisco's position and opportunity? Sure, yeah, Cisco's been invested in using AI for many, many years. What happens, Cisco, like, like most companies, we haven't really talked about the machine learning as a term because machine learning is a tool we use to sort of solve different problems. So we've talked about what are the customer problems we have and then how we solve them and how good our solution is. But we haven't really talked about the details about the how. But we've been using at Cisco and like myself in past career and so forth for many, many years, uh, machine learning. Security has been using it for multiple decades for example. And where's the use case for machine learning? Because it's one of those things where there's different versions and flavors of machine learning. In machine learning we know powers AI and data feeds machine learning. So do you have the, all these dependencies and all these things going on. How, do you, how should someone think about sorting through machine learning? Well, machine learning itself, that, that term is a very broad term. It's almost as big as computer science, right? <laughs> so that, that, that's where a lot of the, the uh, confusion comes in. But what, what happens is you can look at what types of problems you want to solve. And when you try to look at what types of problems you want to solve, some of them, for example, some problems you can exploit the fact that there are laws of physics that apply. And if the laws of physics apply, you should use those laws. We can either figure out that if we drop this, this will fall at some speed by measuring it and using machine learning, or we have, F or we have uh, gravitational force and friction with the air and we account for that and figure it out. So there are many ways to solve uh, these problems and uh, we want to choose the best method for, for solving each one of them. And when people think about Cisco, the first reaction isn't like, oh, machine learning innovator. What are you guys using machine learning for? Where has it been successful? What are you investing in? Where's the innovation? Sure, sure. So there are a lot of problems here that come into play. If you look at, if you look at the customer problems, one example is like all the digital disruption. We have on the order of a million devices, new devices coming on the network every hour uh, throughout, throughout the world. Now, how do you, what are those devices? How should you treat them? With machine learning, we're able to identify what the devices are and then figure out what the network posture should be. For instance, for an IoT device, we want to protect it, protect it from others. Um, another big topic is operations. Uh, as you know, people spend, I think it was uh, Gartner identified that people spend about $60 billion per year on operations costs. Why is it so much? Because most of the operations are manual, about 95% manual, which also means that these changes are slow and error prone. What we do there is we basically use machine learning to do intelligent automation, and we get a whole bunch of insights about what's happening and use that to drive the intelligent automation. Um, you may have heard about assurance which was announced at Cisco Live uh, one year ago at Barcelona. And both in the campus with DNA Center, we announced uh, Cisco DNA Center Assurance. And the data center, we announced network, an network Analytic Engine. And what both of these do is they look at what's happening in the network, they apply machine learning to identify patterns, and from those patterns identify is there a problem, where is the problem, and how can we, uh, what's the root cause, and then how can we uh, solve that problem quickly. John, can you help us connect wh where this fits in, in a multi-cloud environment? Because you know what we, we, we've seen the last couple of years is when we talk about managing the network, a lot of what you know I might be in charge of managing is really outside of my purview, um, and therefore I, I could imagine something like ML is going to be critically important because I, I'm I'm not going to be touching it, but therefore I still need to have data about it, and a lot of that needs to happen. Yeah. Well, one of the places ML helps with uh, multi-cloud is the fact that you need to figure out which 
where to send your packets. Uh, and this comes with SC-WAN. So SC-WAN, we often have multiple uh, paths available to us. And let's say with the move for Office 365, people are using the SaaS service and they want to have very good interactivity. One of the things we realize is that by carefully selecting which path we can use uh, at the branch and the campus too, we can get a 40% reduction in the latency. So that's a way we choose which uh, colo or which uh, region or which site of Office 365 to send the packets to to dr dramatically reduce latency. What's the role of data? Because when you think about it, you know, moving a, a packet from point A to point B, that's networking. Storage acts differently because you store data. Data's got to come back out and be discovered. Now you have this kind of horizontal scalability for cloud, edge, core coming into the middle. Get up the data. So machine learning needs the data, good data, not dirty data, any clean data. How do you see that evolving? How should customers maybe think about preparing for either low hanging use cases? Just what's your thoughts and reactions to yeah, that? Well, the example you gave is a very interesting example. You described how you need to get data from one point to another. For instance, from my device to a data center where the applications are or the cloud. And you also mentioned how the many things in between. What we care about not necessarily, it's not necessarily the application data. We care about, you know, we want to have the best network performance so your application's working as well as possible. In that case, we want to have an understanding of what's happening across the path. So we want to pull telemetry in all kinds of contexts to be able to understand, is there a problem? Where is the problem? Okay. What is it and how to solve it? Yeah. And that's what Assurance does. We pull this yeah. data from the access points and yeah. the switches and the routers. We pour, uh, pull in all kinds of co contextual information to get a rich understanding of the situation to identify if there's, a, uh, uh, if there's a problem or not and then how to solve it. It's the classic behavioral contextual paradigm of data. Yeah. But now you guys are looking at it from a network perspective. Exactly. And as the patterns change, the application centric programmability of the network, the traffic patterns are changing. Hence the announcements here about intent-based networking and hyperflexed anywhere. This is now a new, new dynamic. Talk about the impact of that for, from an AI perspective. How are you guys getting out front on that? As it's not just north, south, east, west, it's pretty much everywhere. The patterns are, could be application specific at any given point on a certain segment of a network. I mean, it's, it's complex. Yeah, it's complex. One of the really nice things about intent-based networking, though, is this fits in really nicely. Um, and, and that was by, by design. Because what happens is intent-based networking, as you know, a user expresses some intent of something they want to do. I want to, to securely onboard this IoT device. And then it gets activated in the network, and then we use assurance to see if it's doing the right thing. Well, what happens is that assurance part, that's basically gathering visibility and insights in terms of what's happening. That's using machine learning to understand what's happening in the network across all these different parts that you mentioned. And then um, what happens is we take those insights and then we make intelligent actions and that's yeah. part of the activation. So this, inter um, with intent-based networking, this feedback yeah. loop that we have directly ties with using uh, the data for, uh, for getting insights and then for activation, for intelligent actions. Uh, John, uh, always want to get the update on the Innovation Lab. Is there anything particular here at the show or uh, you know, what, what, what's new that you can share? Oh yeah, so we are looking at uh, extending uh, IBM uh, to the cloud, to multi-cloud, to uh, mobile devices. So there's a lot of really fascinating work happening there. Um, I believe you're going to be talking to one of my colleagues later too, TK. Yep. And he's, I think, hopefully going to talk about some of the machine learning that's been done. And that's already prioritized, as you know, in encrypted threat analytics. And yep. that's an example of where we use machine learning to identify if there's malware in encrypted traffic. That's a which hard is problem. Really to solve. a fascinating problem. That is a hard. I mean, I I'm looking forward to that conversation. So some members of Cisco, uh, Dave McGrew in particular, Cisco fellow, started working on that problem four and a half years ago. And because of his work with, with other colleagues, he was able, and they were yeah. able to come up with a solution. So it was a very complicated problem, as you saw, but through the, yeah. use and, through the use of machine learning and many years of investment, plus the fact that Cisco had access to Talos, which has, you know, uh, they know the threats throughout the world. So their yeah. list of data in terms of yeah. all kinds of threats is massive. The and volume, that's, that's where powerful. machine learning shines. I mean, you're seeing the, the amount of volume of data coming in, that's where it could do some heavy lifting. Exactly, and John, that's, okay, that's one of Cisco's strengths, the fact that we have this massive view on all the threats throughout the world, and we can yeah. bring it to bear. Yeah, network security foundationally just creates so much value for apps. Um, final question for you, um, for the folks watching, what's in your opinion the most important story here at Cisco Live Barcelona that people should be paying attention to? Ah, 
So I think the, how we're trying to extend across all these different domains and make it like one network for, uh, for our customers. This is still a journey, it's going to take time, but with intent-based networking we can do that and we're going across campus, WAN, uh, data center, to multi-cloud. And how hard is cross-domain? Just to put it in perspective. Cross-domain traversal and then having visibility into these Let from me a latency, a from a physics standpoint, how hard is it? It is, it's quite hard. There's all, there's all kinds of technical challenges. There are even other sorts of challenges. This is Wi-Fi, right? IEEE 802.11 defines the QoS standard for wireless. And that's completely different than how the internet group, IETF, <laughs> defined it for wired. So even between wireless and wired, there's a lot of work that has to be done. And Cisco's lead in that effort. And having all that data. Great to have you on, John. Thanks for spending the time and demystifying machine learning and looking forward to this uh, encrypted understanding with machine learning. That's a hard problem. Looking forward to digging into that. Again, truly, the breakthroughs are happening with machine learning and, and adding value. This is an application-centric world. This, the the data is all, all about the data. This is theCUBE, bringing you the data from Barcelona. I'm Jeffrey Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more coverage after this short break. Really